Hey guys, there's a brand new SpaceX Starlink bite-sized dish. Bite-sized. Let's go talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside. So good, so good. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. It's pretty cool, actually. I was reading about this and I thought that it would be something interesting that you'd wanna know. And it depends on obviously what you use your Starlink for, but there's a lot of people out there that are mobile, on the go, maybe campers or maybe you do hiking or you're outdoors buffs, let's say. And it'd be very cool to have a little bite-sized dish with you wherever you go and have high-speed internet anywhere. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But before I do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, why the hell not go check them out? They're free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. And if you enjoy this video, even the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. And if you're not subscribed, why the hell not? Subscribe, and if you are, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you're looking for a VPN, consider PureVPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is jchristina, or you can use the URL jchristina.com forward slash VPN and get 15 additional percent off. Also, if you want more Starlink content after watching this video, I'll put a playlist right here so you can check that out and finally if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work there's a little thank you button right down here click on that give a dollar or two if you like if not that's perfectly fine consider becoming a member of the channel that would be even better so now that all the housekeeping is out of the way i want to read to you a short article that i found there was actually about six of them about this and it has to do with this mini size dish and i think it was very interesting because like i said there's going to be a lot of people out there that are interested in this and i figure i'd bring it to your attention and tell you kind of what it can do what it can't do and maybe dispel some of the rumors out there on what this thing is going to be all about. Anyways, the article starts out by saying Starlink's new mini dish is set to hit the market by the end of this year. Quote, we'll be introducing the Starlink mini later this year, which can fit into a backpack, according to SpaceX's CEO, Elon Musk, which he said in a speech to employees on Friday. So they're going to call it the Starlink mini and not the bite-sized version. I like bite-sized version, whatever. Anyways, it continues. This comes after Starlink gained approval from the FCC or the Federal Communications Commission for the dish, which was said to be about the size of an Apple MacBook. It's about the size of an iPad, a larger iPad. Not that big, I think it's 10 by 12. It continues. Smaller than SpaceX's first generation dish. Yeah, I think so. Whoever wrote this article, they obviously don't know anything about the first generation dish because that was round, oblong, and not square or rectangular, and it was this big. Anyways, we'll give them a pass. In one FCC filing, the Starlink Mini measured about 10 inches by 12 inches. Like I said, it's more like an iPad in size. That's about half the size of the Starlink standard dish, which measures about 23 inches by 15 inches. Now that's Mr. Bevel. That's what we currently have, the 23 by 15. It is a really good size, actually. Starlink Mini portable size and possible affordability will likely be attractive qualities to customers. In addition, the dish may use less power than the standard dish, according to the Starlink hardware website, but it likely won't deliver the fastest internet speeds. I'll get into that in just a second. It is unclear the exact date that the mini dish as well as the new standard terminal will go on sale and how much they will cost. Starlink's current residential hardware costs $599, not including the $120 per month subscription fee. In July, SpaceX sent out invitations to select users to try the Wi-Fi 6 supported Generation 3 router, which comes with the Starlink kit, but it would cost them $200. Well, yeah, it's $199, but of course it would cost them that because it's basically another router. 
And as we know, you can, through Starlink, build out a mesh network just simply marrying additional routers. So if you, for example, were to buy six of these, it would cost you $1,200, $200 a piece, but you would end up with six additional nodes or APs or access points in that mesh network in your business or home. So everything would be covered, right? So there is a benefit of buying these. Even if you're not going to use it as a standalone, you can also use these as APs even on a generation two kit or a generation two system like what I'm currently using here. So the question is, will this be slower as they were speculating here in this article? And I would have to say it might or it might not. And the reason I say that is because I don't think that they need to make this slower just because it's smaller and there's less antennae, let's say, in that antenna, all right? I don't think that it's necessary. I think that they can keep the speeds up. That's my personal opinion. But it might have something to do with marketing. They might make it cheaper so that people on the go can use this, number one, because now remember, they're still going to be paying that higher price. Because if you are getting a roaming package through Starlink, you're not gonna pay $120 per month, you're gonna pay 150. So if they charge you a little bit less for this dish, so be it. Now, if the speeds are a little bit slower and they're still charging you more, that's once again a win-win in the pocket. Once again, I think it's going to be more about marketing and less about what the actual possibilities are with this smaller 12 by 10 dish. Because once again, I really do think that they should be able to pull out 100 down and 10 up without even a blink of an eye. So that's my personal opinion. I don't work for SpaceX or Starlink. Now, what would make things quicker and what does make things quicker, and some people get this twisted, they think that it's the router that's making things quicker, it's the larger dish that's making things quicker, that's not what's doing it. We're seeing speed increases and we're seeing latency decreases, and that is awesome. The reason that is is because of the version two mini satellites because the version 1.5s had half the capacity of the version 2.0 minis. Or you can look at it the other way, the 2.0 minis have double the capacity. What does that mean? Basically, if I remember correctly, the 1.5s were able to transact, I think it's about 86 terabits of data per second, 86. Whereas the new satellites are double that, let's call it 160 terabits per second. That is a lot. Now, how does that make things faster? Well, if you have a cell that has 100 people in it and all 100 people are downloading at 100 megabits and everything is copacetic, well, what happens when you have 200 people in that cell, right? All of a sudden, it doesn't have the capacity anymore and it has to now throttle everyone back to 50 megabits per second so that all 200 people can have internet access. Once again, you only have one pie, it's how you slice it up is what makes the difference. Each slice could be a big slice, meaning a lot of data, or it could be a smaller slice because you need to make more slices. You get it? Slices. Anyways, also, if you look at it the other way, if there is 200 people in the node and we have the faster service or the greater capacity service that goes from that 86 terabits up to 160 terabits, now that doubling gives all 200 of the people in that node the 100 megabits down. You following that? So it's more about the satellites that are overhead and less about the hardware. I have personally seen Mr. Bevel or my dish download at speeds well in excess of 300 megabits down and over 40 to 45 megabits up. Now that was 27 months ago in beta times or just out of beta times when there was about 113,000 people on board. That's when I came on with SpaceX Starlink. Once again, 27 months ago. Now there's over 2.4, 2.5 million people. So there's a major difference the amount of people. If it wasn't for those SpaceX Starlink version 2 minis up there, over a thousand I think at this point in operation, 
the speeds would not be that fast, especially with this massive number of people on board, and there would still be a waiting list. Now we don't see a waiting list. Now, what is the difference? People ask me all the time, what is the difference between a generation two and a generation three router? And should I get a generation three router if I can? Well, the generation three router is faster. This is always the question. Is my internet going to be faster? The router is faster. Your internet will not be faster. What the hell does that even mean, Joe? Well, what that means is if you stick an ethernet cable into your generation two and you stick an ethernet cable into your generation three, you're gonna get the same speeds. Now, if you go Wi-Fi with it, remember the generation two has Wi-Fi five. The generation three has Wi-Fi six. Wi-Fi six does have added capacity. There is about four different things that you can look at what is better, let's say, with a Wi-Fi 6 setup and what makes it faster. The speed increase that you get from a Wi-Fi 6 is only internal. It is not external. So if you have multiple devices on your LAN, on your local area network, and you're sending data back and forth, the Wi-Fi 6 is going to be able to do it better hence the generation three. So not only do you get increased speeds with the generation three or the Wi-Fi six, you're also gonna get improved capacity. What does that mean? That means that it can handle more devices simultaneously. That's just simply one of the benefits of a Wi-Fi six compared to a Wi-Fi five router. Also, you're gonna get better performance in crowded areas, meaning that it can handle, it does BSS and it does TWT. I'm not gonna get into all that. Basically, what that does is it allows for better connectivity in really congested channels or congested networks, just by the way it puts let's say tags onto the data. Once again, I'm not gonna get into it, but bottom line is it does better in congested networks. And finally, you are going to get enhanced security with the generation three, meaning that instead of having WPA2, you get WPA3. WPA3 provides enhanced encryption. It's just gonna give you a little bit more security. A lot of people don't need it, but still you do get it. So. It's faster, more secure, it can handle more devices, yada, yada, yada. Once again, generation three is better. Now, who is this dish for? Like I said from the very beginning, it's for the people that are roamers, the people that are backpackers, maybe even a biker, anyone that needs to be able to carry high-speed internet access on their back, not, not in use, that would be kind of funny, but not in use, but on your back, pull it out. It's gonna be 10 inches by 12 inches, very small, the size of an iPad. You pull out the little plastic kickstand, you stick it on the ground, plug it in, and there you go. You could be in the middle of the woods somewhere, as long as you can see the sky, not too many trees, but as long as you can see the sky, or you could be on the top of the mountain, you could be anywhere on the planet and you're going to get high-speed internet access. But like I said, it is going to cost you $150 per month for that roaming package. It's not gonna be $120 per month. And if you wanna go worldwide with it globally, I think it's about $200 per month. But for a lot of people that are moving around the planet and they're always on the go, they have now internet access that is high speed, low latency anywhere, which is unbelievable. And that is what is so amazing when it comes to SpaceX Starlink. It's the means of being able to connect the world. The parts of the world that didn't have internet connection ever or the parts of the world that had extremely slow internet connection, now they have high speed, low latency internet. That provides education, that provides emergency services, that just simply empowers people with the knowledge of the planet at their fingertips. That is amazing, absolutely amazing. Anyways, guys, is this something that you would be interested in? Would you want one of these bite-sized, tic-tac size? I think we could call it, maybe, should we call it a tic-tac? Yeah, a tic-tac. Would you like one of these tic-tac size SpaceX Starlink dish? Is this something that you would throw in your backpack and take it on the go? Let me know. I think it's pretty cool. I really do. And I think that a lot of people are going to buy it. And I do think that they're going to be able to keep these speeds at 100 down and 10 up. You could quote me on it. Go ahead. Just quote me. If I'm wrong, tell me.
Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the very many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. Check out some of my merch, check out my teas. If there's anything you like, pick it up. I would really appreciate you supporting my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. 